I'm Tina. I'm an art teacher here in Portland and I wanted to share a project with you that you can probably do just by grabbing things around your house. Um, the project is collage and the inspiration, um, something that I've been thinking about a lot this month, is Pride Month. Um, the first thing that I think of when I think of Pride um, is the flag and um, as you probably know, Pride Month is about celebrating and honoring the LGBTQ community, and the flag is a rainbow. So what better way to get colorful and to shred up some stuff that we find around the house um, than to create a collage? So um, here are some things that you're going to need if you are interested in joining along. Um, you're going to need stuff like magazines, um, they work really well, um, particularly if they have color images because like the rainbow flag, we're gonna be thinking about color a lot in the project that we're working on. So even here, when I open up this page, I see there's obviously a scene happening here, but I wanna just focus on that blue, for example. So um, I'm going to just, as I'm gathering my materials, think about where I can find colors that I can start collecting. Um, Magazines are great for this, but um, if you don't have a bunch of magazines around, even something like junk mail um, could be great. There's lots of color images in here, and I'm also seeing um, a big chunk of blue, yellow. Um, so really, if you start scavenging and looking through maybe your recyclables or the things that you're not using anymore to find the color, that's going to be your, your first step. Um, other ideas, I have some old paint chips, um, so stuff like this, it's literally just a blob of color. That's great to use. Um, and I also have my own paintings. Um, so paintings that for whatever reason didn't love, I can recycle them and reuse them and find the gems inside of them um, so that I can appreciate them in another art form. So once you have found that collection of stuff that is okay to cut up and rip and shred, um, then you have done the first step. The next part is, like I was saying, you want to scavenge through and really find those different colors. So um, even if you see this image and you're thinking, oh, wow, that's like a really interesting um, heron right there. Like I might want to cut that out or an interesting tree. I want you to think less for this particular thing about objects and more about just colors because we're going to be dividing our scraps into um, into piles of colors. So I'm going to show you my messy table now. Um, I love making a mess. I feel like that really helps my creativity. Um, and uh, with any mess, I like to organize it. So this is where I think it's kind of like, uh, it gets kind of fun. Um, if you have ever baked, you know that you kind of need to pull out all the ingredients and then you need to get them um, kind of like organized so that you can see all of them and really see what you're working with. And I think of, um, I think of this process kind of similar to that as just taking all the ingredients and kind of just organizing them, making sure you have what you need. Um, I did some ripping, cutting, and gluing before I started filming, so I have a lot of these different um, piles that are already created. And it's just kind of nice to go through and see where's my yellow pile, where's my green pile, blue. Um, yeah, so I'm just kind of like seeing what I have here, looking at my, my stock of ingredients. And of course, the recipe for our collage is, is not one that is already planned. That's something that we're going to figure out um, as we start to move our piles onto, onto our piece of paper. So you will need something to actually use as the base of your collage. Um, I'm using a rectangle because, like I said a little bit earlier, I'm thinking a lot about the rainbow flag. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about why the rainbow flag in particular has been such an inspiration for me this month. Um, but you don't need to use a rectangle for your piece of paper. 
if you want to ditch the rectangle idea, um, you could use a circle, um, you could use a square, triangle, whatever you think would be a really interesting base for this collage that you're going to put on top. So I'm going to keep on organizing these little things. Bing, bang, boom. And some of my colors, I'm noticing, they're not really colors of the rainbow, but they're just colors that are kind of making my heart sing. So I'm just gonna keep going with those. They're just piles that make sense to me. Um, and I don't know where they're gonna go yet. Like I said, there's no recipe so far. So I'm just gonna see what I have here. As I'm looking through my piles, even though they share a color, I am noticing that they they have lots of different textures on them um, and lots of different patterns. I'm just kind of observing some interesting things that are going on here with what I've cut or what I've ripped. Um, there's always the edge of the paper, which creates some, some really interesting moments in a collage. So that's something to think about. Um, and now I've got my organized mess here. I've got my different piles. So what I'm going to do next is um, I'm going to get ready to start thinking about the pride flag um, and what it really means to me, especially for this month. And I wanted to share some information that I have with you about the pride flag because um, you've probably seen the rainbow flag around a million times and um, this year I really wondered where it came from and um, I've been seeing some different designs around for the rainbow pride flag and I wanted to see where those ideas came from and, and I'm really interested in how ideas change. So I wanted to share a couple of images with you um, and we are going to start with the first pride flag that was created. So the very first flag um, that you see here was created in 1978 um, by a designer and an artist named Gilbert Baker. And he was inspired by the rainbow, which he called a natural flag in the sky. Um, so you can see here that it has eight stripes, which is a little different from the regular rainbow that we see everywhere today, which has six stripes. And the reason why that got shifted was because um, it was just simpler to mass produce a flag that has six stripes rather than eight. And those six different colors that we see in the rainbow flag actually have meanings, which I didn't realize. So um, I wanted to include those, like red means life, orange, healing, yellow, sun, nature is green, harmony is blue, and spirit is purple. Um, I thought that those were really important and interesting things to think about, that in the LGBTQ community, in 1978 when this flag was created, those were the values that were really important um, to the community that they felt that they wanted to be represented. And what I think is really cool about that is that it has continued to shift and change. And so it, a few years ago um, in 2017, the brown and the black stripes were added. Um, and the meanings behind those were to represent the LGBTQ um, black community as well as people of color. And um, by adding those stripes, it adds more visibility to those specific communities um, and shows that they all belong together on the same flag, which I think is really beautiful. Then just one year later, a Portland artist and designer, Daniel Quasar, added on um, some more stuff onto the flag. So. Uh, this is called the Progress Pl Pride Flag, and it combines together those different flags. Um, it combines together the Pride Flag along with um, the version that was um, put out in 2017 um, with the addition of the brown and the black stripe, and it also adds in um, a flag, the Transgender Pride Flag, which was designed by Monica Helms. Um, so you can see that in this chevron pattern, those colors are represented there. So there's really, um, there's something about all of these colors coming together with their different symbolisms and their histories, 
which tells me something about inclusion and how that's become something which is really important to represent in the flag. Um, and when I think about inclusion in terms of art making, I think a lot about the idea of unity. Um, and if you know anything about the principles of art and design, you might know something about this idea of unity, which is where things come together in a way on our paper um, that show that even though there are things that are different, like in this case, the colors of the flag or maybe even the width of the lines, um, the way that they come together um, is cohesive and there's something in common. So they, they share something in the actual space that they take up and there's a sense of unity, there's a sense of belonging um, for all of those different things that are within the rectangle. So, um, flags are really powerful and that's something that I was thinking about. The way that we represent ourselves and the way we, we are represented in community is really powerful. Um, and even though Pride is gonna be looking a little bit different this year because of social distancing, um, I still think that there's something powerful in the way that we represent ourselves and that the way we see ourselves in community. Um, so I thought that it was going to be kind of powerful to be able to reinterpret those different colors from the things that we find around our home into a flag. Um, so really, how do we make this our own with the ingredients that we have um, in a way which shows unity? That's the question that's been on my mind and I'm gonna figure it out with you. Okay, so I have got my organized mess in front of me and I've got my glue stick and I've got my scissors. I've got my base piece of paper. I've decided for me that's gonna be a rectangle and I am ready to roll. So now I need to figure out from all of these delicious ingredients that I have, what the recipe is gonna be. How am I going to show unity between all of these scraps of paper? Um, something that's really beautiful about collage is that um, you can just keep adding to it. And um, the other thing that I really love about it is that just because you put a piece of paper down doesn't mean you have to glue it right away. You can really spend some time thinking about how you want to approach this puzzle. Um, and the puzzle doesn't have to fit together. It just has to make sense to you when you think of unity. Um, so some of these... Uh, I've cut into random little shapes. Speaking of puzzle, this kind of looks like a puzzle piece to me. And I've also got these big blobs. Um, so I might do something like rip those up into smaller pieces. I might just start to lay down and I'm, I'm just experimenting. I'm really just kind of trusting my gut with where things could go and I've practiced a lot in in not thinking too hard about it especially at this stage as I'm just plopping things down I'm just kind of like seeing what's interesting and as I'm doing that little associations are coming to my mind like I'm thinking of of glitter and confetti when I just put those little pieces down. Um, I have this beautiful brown color, um, which is literally just an image of, of like this clay looking dirt. Um, so I'm just gonna plop that down, see where it goes. And, hmm, I'm not ready for that one yet. I'm wondering how I can get these different things on my paper to kind of connect. So that's what I'm thinking about as I'm um, ripping things. How can I create patterns? Um, one way to show unity is to think about where things are coming from on the page. So is everything pointing towards one thing? And um, in that case, a lot of different things could all be moving together to kind of create that sense of unity, like they're all in movement together. And I kind of like that idea as I'm saying it out loud. 
I like the idea of things in movement together. Um, I feel like that that makes sense for me and how I feel about the LGBTQ community and pride. Um, almost like literally thinking about a parade. What if I made the different pieces on my paper the parade? Um, yeah. I'm going to try to get down different colors, explore different shapes, and... And just see what happens. Okay. So I put down some random things. I didn't use all my colors, but I have some interesting things going on here. Um, so I am interested in using that as one of my examples. Um, so maybe like my first version. Um, if you have a phone at home, something that I really like to do is actually use it to take photos of my different versions. So when I think back to the first version of the pride flag that Gilbert Baker created, um, that was a beautiful idea at the time. And it's a part of our history. It's using a lot of the same ingredients that those other flags are using. Um, and it's just a starting place. So I have my, I have a photo of my first version here. Now, what if I just take the same things on my piece of paper and move them around? And I don't have to worry because if I really liked that idea, that's okay. I can always come back to it later. I'm going to start adding some more things in. What if where my different scraps are meeting on the paper is actually moved just a little bit to create some more space here? That means moving some things around. And as I move things around, I'm noticing how different things, different scraps are interacting on my paper. So I'm just gonna keep on going for it, just see what else, what else fits here in this puzzle that I'm making up for myself. I need to go. And maybe, maybe I start to layer things together. So um, I'm actually, like I said earlier, one of my favorite things is just layering things on top. So um, what if I just took different scraps and laid them inside of each other? Does it make sense? I don't know. I'm just going to keep going until it does. So this would be my second version. I'm going to go ahead and take a photo of my second version. And I could just keep playing with this all day. Um, and as I do, what I notice when I move my hands, especially when I move my hands thinking about something like unity, I start to think about unity differently. Like, um, like you just saw, different pieces coming together. What if they all come to a certain point? What if they're moving together like um, we move together in a pride parade? Um, my next thought might be, what if there's an obstacle here? And that's something that all of my different colors are overcoming. There's lots of different thoughts that you can get into. And I feel like when you move your hands around, um, your, your mind and your hands are kind of thinking at the same time. So... I hope you enjoyed that exploration. Thank you for joining me. Um, if you would like to share your photograph of your collage of your rainbow pride flag, I would love to see it. 
all of your interpretations are going to be beautiful um, if they mean something to you. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining me.